All right, welcome back everybody. This is Luke and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, marathon long runs. I want to talk specifically about 16 mile long run and a couple things about that, but uh, mainly how how it does work. I want to go into it a little bit more um, because I think there's a lot of I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm looking at Hal. I'm actually looking at Hal Higdon's website right now. I'm looking at the advanced plan, and um, I think a lot of people come to us, or they come to the, they find the book, the Hanson's Marathon Method, through you know maybe doing Hal Higdon at first, or you know it's, it's a lot of times it's lumped into those those brackets. Um, and I'm looking at his advanced plan right now, like I said, and it's uh, it's an interesting plan um, to say the least. And I don't want to. I don't want to bash on, uh, on Hal cause I mean, he's helped, you know, a ton of people run a marathon. Uh, but I just, you know, I think I just feel like I end up having to explain myself because it's not it, the 16, what the handsome plan is so much different than what Hal Higgins plan is at, at, at a bigger level at a, you know, 30,000 foot view where yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's actually, it's similar in some ways, but then it's so different in other ways. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about I want to talk about that stuff a little bit, and um, you know, because the, the long run for the marathons always, always the big the big discussion, right? Um, it's always what everybody focuses on, especially more recreational type athletes, and uh, I think it needs to, you know, you know, it's a lot of a lot of times on our end, it's convincing a person that they can they can go 16 miles, um, and that it, it, they'll be okay. Um, and I think that, uh, it's hard, it's a hard sell sometimes, right? So, um, it's sometimes they're just downright defiant and they're just not going to do 16. And, um, and now I, I think I kind of understand a little bit why just looking at other plans that are readily avail available and, and very popular on the, uh, World Wide web. So I want to talk a little bit about that. I won't, I'm not going to hash a ton of things at length just because we, we talked about it at length. I have blogs on it. Um, if you've read Hanson's Marathon Method books, we have entire chapters on it. Um, but there are certain rules that, that we lay out, you know, that I learned from Kevin and Keith and that I apply to the vast majority of my, of my athletes. So, you know, so first of all, you know, people get stuck on the 16 mile aspect of it. And I even did a little bit there too, but at the end of the day, it's not even really about whether it's straight up 16 or 20 miler. It's, it's more about just keeping the long run within certain guidelines that will allow for other aspects of training to occur. So in other words, we weren't, we're not putting all our eggs in the marathon basket. We're not putting it into the long run basket, right? So we're, we're, we're going to rely on other things than just a 20 mile long run. That's going to uh, make sure that we're ready to go for, for the day. Um, we want to share fairly equally the importance of marathon paced running and running faster than marathon pace for athletes we want to keep long runs less than 30 percent of their weekly mile of their weekly volume and really under three three and a half hours um, in time that it takes them to complete the the long run and me personally i'm a fan of faster long runs i you know if you've purchased a plan from us or you're involved in any of our discussions you know i you know i don't normally prescribe easy paces for long runs. I prescribe what we have as a long run pace, which is, is, you know, maybe starting out at easy pace, but working down to a pretty, pretty good clip towards, you know, approaching marathon pace, getting within, you know, 30 seconds a mile of, of marathon pace. So I, I am personally a fan of that. I think you have to treat it as not a, an LSD, a long, slow distance run, but you know, a, a, something that you're, you're going to be getting after. Now, if you're, if you're new to marathon running or new to, new to training in general, no, probably not. Not going to probably gonna do that, but it's more about covering the ground and getting used to getting, building that overall endurance. But, uh, if you're an experienced runner, I, I'm, I would really like to see those runs get faster. Those long runs get faster. Um, you know, I would argue that, uh, you know, like I said, so it's not really about 16 or 20. It's really more that in the, with Kevin Key's plan and then just looking at who is using that plan on average, 16 miles fits the vast majority of people, right? So 16 miles for the vast majority of people using our, the plans, not my plan, Kevin Key's plan is that uh, they're fitting into that three, three and a half hour range and they're keeping that vo overall volume um, pretty, pretty close to that 25 to 30% 
weekly volume. Um, and I'm looking at, so just because just, just I'm looking at Higdon's plan right now, so I'm looking at his advanced plan. And, and so, you know, every week you you basically fit the entirety of the plan into four days a week, right? So you do something on Thursday, you take Friday off, Saturday you run at marathon pace, and then Sunday you're doing a long run. So that's four four things of substance in three days. And so then, of course, you have to take, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to recover from that, right? And so to me, that's digging a hole that a lot of people can't get out of. Um, I feel like you end up surviving the training and not necessarily um, – thriving under the training although i'd say people would people would argue that with us too but i think the most people who are successful with our with our plans actually feel much stronger than they would think that they they think that they would but um it's just an interesting thing and so i do kind of think it's a little bit like ours because if you know you look at our saturday you have a longer easy run and then you have your long run on sunday so you are putting a lot of mileage in over the weekend but um you know at this you know with Hal, you know, you're putting a 10 mile run at pace. And if you're warming up and cooling down, you're talking anywhere from, you know, 12 to 14 miles plus 20 miles on, you know, Sunday on this, on his week 11 of this advanced one plan. So, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of mileage over the weekend. I would, and then you look at that, that is going to be, so that say that's just at face value, that's 30 miles. Um, so then you're talking about 20, 19 miles for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so yeah, that's well over fifty percent of your weekly weekly volume um, right there. So it just it just you're, I just feel like you're putting a lot of stuff in a in a short win. And this kind of goes to what I'm going to talk about as far as you know um, uh, the re, uh, super compensation cycle uh, and what that what that actually means. So um, so so just going into that, I want to talk about. Uh, I do have a couple blogs. Uh, one is how am I going to make it twenty six point two at this pace, and the other one is stress recovery principles, which goes into the idea of super compensation a little bit. Um, and actually, if you're in the run club, uh, I am going to do a team talk on this uh, February 8th, I believe. Um, I think that's the date, Wednesday or Thursday next week. So um, be on the lookout for that if you're in the run club or the run club light levels or a coached athlete, you have access to, to all of that. But um, I have to me, the, the super compensation goes into that idea of how the, the shorter long run can be more successful, right? And so uh, in terms of super compensation specifically for the long run, I want to first go back to the tempo run on Thursday. A tempo run is going to take anywhere from 24 to 30, out, 30 hours to go through the immediate decline in performance the ability to recover and then super compensation. So um, I do have a picture of the super compensation phase. If you're watching the video, you should be seeing that slide now. But you have phase one where you're doing the you did the workout and you're in that dash line across the uh, across the horizontal is your baseline fitness and time. You do the workout. That solid line is basically a representation of your fitness. It automatically goes down. You're not going to be able to perform. Uh, you, you have a decline in per performance to a certain amount of time, and then you reach a point where things start to recover, your fitness slopes back up, and then over time will actually go past what your baseline level is and then come back down um, to that baseline. And this, this is over the course of, in the short term, when you're talking about a single workout, you're talking anywhere in the course of a day or two to maybe three or four days. Um, and so that's what we have. That's what I'm, when I'm referring to time frames, that's what I'm talking about right here. Um, so if you do your run in the morning, that means by so going back to that, say 24 to 30 hours to recover from a longer tempo. So when we're talking about time we get to eight, nine, 10 mile tempo runs, 24 to 30 hours to go through the immediate decline in performance and then start the recovery phase and get into really more to that, that baseline level. So if you do your runs on, on in the morning, that means by Friday morning, if you did your tempo on Thursday, by Friday morning to maybe sometime in Friday afternoon, you pretty much reach that full recovery phase and then by Saturday morning, you have reached some super compensation. You might be just below, right at, or just above that baseline level, um, but you're there, right? You're back to where your regular your regular levels. However, one on a week you have a 16 mile long run, you usually have an eight to 10 mile run before that. 
So a run like that is probably going to take 12 to 24 hour range to recover from. So you're so basically what I'm saying is you do that with tempo on Thursday, you are um, you have an immediate decline in performance, and it takes some time to recover from that. So that by the time you get to that Saturday morning, you're probably going to be right about that recovered phase in terms of glycogen replenishment and all that good stuff. And then you are going to be at that baseline or slightly below that baseline. Um, if you're tired, you know, if cumulative fatigue is working, you're probably actually going to be a little bit below that baseline. And then you do the 16 mile long run and that's going to take you another, um, 24, you know, that's going to be 26 miles, 24 to 26 miles within about a 24 to 26 hour period. So within just about a day, you've run about a marathon, right? And so my point with that is that you've, you do that bigger, easy run on Saturday, you dig a hole, right? From a fitness line, you see you have that immediate decline in performance, you start to come back on the recovery phase. So you're not, you, you haven't, you haven't dipped that that line hasn't completely fallen off a cliff with that, that longer, easier run, but it has decreased quite a bit. But then you start the recovery phase, you're going to be just below, probably just below that initial starting point, right? Your baseline level. And then you do the long run and it goes back down again, right? But the fact that you've spread that out over two days, you kind of have a down, back up, down again, and then you can come back up and then you have all of Sunday, Monday to recover from that and then get ready for whatever you have on Tuesday. If at that point of the schedule, you're going to be in the strength, the strength phase of the, of the plan. But if you did just a 20 miler, especially looking, looking at Hal Higdon's plan, this is exactly why you, it would be tough to do something on Tuesday on this plan, because I'm looking at, so if I did a 45 minute tempo, I'm going to be in a pretty big decline. Yeah, I'm going to be able to rest on Saturday, but then I'm coming right back uh, Friday, and then I'm be coming right back Saturday doing a 10-mile tempo run. There's no way on earth I'm going to be recovered, um, even really kind of even – I'm probably actually going to be at the bottom of that valley um, of that big decline by the time I start the 20-miler. So I'm really digging a hole on Saturday, and I'm not recovering from that, and I'm digging it even deeper on Sunday, right? So in our case – we are digging hole on Saturday. Our fitness is, we're going to see a decline in performance, right? And this is really why it goes back to where Kevin says, you, this is really about running this last 16 miles of the marathon and not the first 16 miles. Cause you're not fresh going into it. You're tired, but you're not overly tired, right? Like you've got that tired of having a fairly long, easy run for a lot of people. If it's a, if it's a 10 mile run and you're running eight minute pace, well then you're talking an hour 20 run. And then you're doubling that with a third, three hour run on the next day. There you go. You're, you're accumulating that roughly four hours that you'd be doing for the marathon in about a 24 hour period, but it's not going to have that detriment, that such a detrimental effect that it would be if it was just a straight up 20 and then you're really going into depletion. You're not recovering at all. You dig that hole so deep that you would need three or four days to, to recover from that. And that's, that's to me what really makes it work. You, you are accumulating that mileage over a short period of time, but it's kind of, it's kind of spaced out enough where you can dig the hole, recover a little bit, dig the hole deeper on the long run, but then you still have time to come back and recover well the rest of Sunday into Monday and then do your workout on Tuesday and and, and then you can go. And that's why we can actually fit more over a seven-day period, more mileage, more volume of intensity, SOS, if you would say, those types of things. We can do those things and those are and you're getting more balance in, in the training. Um, so what I will see with some of the athletes I coach is that they'll, they'll want to keep the long run Sunday, but they'll want Saturday completely off for whatever reasons. Um, and so to me, that takes away some of the effectiveness of doing uh, the 16 mile run. I, I, you know, cause I think you, what makes that 16 mile work is that easy, that longer, easy run the day before, because you're kind of putting some junk in your legs. You're a little bit tired going into that long run, but not so tired that it's going to be, incredibly slow, uh, slow run. And so I think in that case, you're better off moving your long run to Saturday and then just taking Sunday off. Cause then you can do the tempo Thursday, run easy Friday to recover. And then sat Sunday, Saturday, go into your, to your long run. So have that, you're going to have stuff in your legs because that tempo run's not going to be completely out of your legs by the time you get to that long run, if you do it on, on a Saturday and then just take Sunday off. And then you're kind of back on there. You have Sunday off Monday to 
easy run, and then Tuesday you're back on your on your schedule. But it's still not as crammed in as I think I'm looking at. And I just, I really, you know, it just seems like a lot of work for the average person to do over a four day span. Three three workouts over a, a four a four day span, and four meaty workouts or three meaty workouts over four days. That's pretty pretty substantial. But um, in any case, uh, the last part I want to go into is whether or not 16 or 20 is the magic number. Truth is, like I said, none, neither one are magic numbers. And my advice for people who are new, if they you, let's say you bought the book, whatever, and you want to cheat that long run up, which I see a lot of times, you know, people accidentally get lost and it turns out to be, oh, I just got lost and it just happened to turn out to be 20 miles. Um, yeah, seen that before. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think you just have to be careful. It's already a pretty hard schedule. I think if you talk to anybody in that Facebook group or um, people who've used the plan before, it's not an easy plan, even though the long run's you know only sixteen. Um, if you, you know, so I would say you know your your chances are you're probably going to be doing a lot more work because um, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, "Oh, I've already done like you know an intermediate plan here and there," so I just went to the advanced plan. I was like, "Oh my gosh, it was more way harder than I thought it would be." You know, so it's hard work, right? And so I think you have to just kind of. Um, take it easy on there, not not cheat things up. But if you've been through the plan and you feel like you're truly maxed out at what you can accomplish at that level, you know, so at the advanced plan, you're peaking out roughly 60 miles a week, right? And so um, if you're there and you maybe you've done the plan three or four times and you've really just kind of plateaued out where you're at, and um, you know, then yeah, sure, bump up your mile, bump up your long run to 18 um, at 60 at 60 miles a week, which is where you'd be at peak. You know, by the definition I gave, 18 miles would, you know, put you at the top end of that range. And if you're at 65, I think it's like 19.5 would be in the percentage, but, you know, round up, you can round up to 20. Um, you know, that's fine. But um, I think you have to be in a position where, um, I think you have to be in a position where you've been through the plan a few times um, and you really truly feel like you've maxed out where you can be um, at at the base level of the plan, right? And then you can start making adjustments. Uh, I think what's key is just understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it and try to look at things from the big picture view and then narrow it down to what you want to really want to dial in on. So in this case, the long run, right? So from the big picture view, we're looking at, okay, we have something pretty significant on Tuesday, pretty significant on Thursday. Saturday is not a cakewalk. And then we have a long run on Sunday. So cheating up the the long run to match what you know other th people will tell you that they need to do um but not understanding where they're at in the whole terms of the schedule uh i think you know then you say well okay but i'm doing all this work before maybe i just maybe i just back off and, and follow the plan and i'll tell you what like most of the criticism that i see when people talk about hansons is that all you know they, uh, the immediate thing they go to right is the 16 mile long run and as soon as they do that, I can pretty much tell you that they've never looked at the plan in its entirety and they haven't seen everything that you're doing leading up to those runs and they haven't looked at what your total volume is and they haven't looked at what work you're actually doing for 18 weeks. And so usually when people just bash on the 16 mile run, I can tell you right away that it's not something that they've looked at in the entirety. They just they just focused on the 16 and not everything else you were doing before that or really tried to really try to understand why it's like that or you know they've never really truly listened to what Kevin and Keith have said and what I said in the book um, based on what Kevin and Keith have said that it's it's not about 16 or 20 it's about what fits where you're at and I think and if you look at Daniel's running formula who's also a big influence for a lot of a lot of athletes and a lot of coaches you know he specifically says in his long run for the marathon right like it's pretty similar guidance and he's just basically like, listen, if you can only if if you if if your criteria only allows for a 15 mile long run, well, then it's a 15 mile long run. Right. And so um, you have to you, you kind of have to work your way up to it. But uh, uh, in any case, I think my point with this one is just really recognizing that the 16 mile long run when Kevin and Keith are saying that it's really about the the, the last 16 miles of the of the race, not the first 16 miles of the race. That's what they're referring to is because of what you're doing Thursday, which is, you know, pretty much out of your legs by the time you get to Saturday, but then you're, you're digging that whole Saturday coming out of it a little bit and then digging it deeper on Sunday. 
which allows you to not dig it as deep, not have the immediate effect of just drastically digging a hole that now you've got to get out of. Either You either have to take, like in Hal's plan, you either have to take Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday pretty easy um, if you just load up over the weekend, uh, whereas if you are moderate on that but still accumulating the mileage, you can – you can put that junk in your legs, but still recover it for the next week, right? Because it's it's really about what you add on week after week after week, right? And so um, if you space that out just enough, you're going to be able to to add more over time and you're going to be able to do more over time. Um, but it's all about really spreading it out and allowing that super compensation to take effect and then knowing when you can push and when you can, and when you have to back off, right? And so with, with us, I think it's more about just getting people to – Accumulate that volume over the weekend, um, Saturday being a longer run, more time on your feet, and then you finish that time on your feet on Sunday, but it still allows you to get after it a little bit more on the pace. Because I want to bet a lot of people who run that Saturday pace pace run on um, uh, Hal's plan is th- that long run on Sunday is pretty conservative, right? I, I don't think there's a lot of pushing on there. I think a lot of it's just trying to get through. Um, Whereas with us, and and this is just a difference. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I think for us, it's been really successful. Um, If you're, you're fairly moderate on that pace on Saturday, um, like I said, one, you're putting that time on your feet. You're putting an hour plus for most people on your feet, uh, maybe even close to an hour and a half for some people. um, And then you're coming back and running another three hours on Sunday, but you're able to do it at a, I bet your average pace is a pretty, pretty close to what you're doing by a te- temple run on Saturday and then a long run on Sunday. So, um, so yeah, I just want you to think about that as you move on. Um, as you think about the plans you're doing, think about how you're approaching your long runs on the weekend. Um, if it were me, um, just to wrap this up, I think that if it were me, you take that long, you take the easy run Saturday, you make it an easy to moderate run. You know, you put your hour to hour 15, hour 20 in, um, and then you, you recover a little bit from that. And then I would use the 16 miler as a run. You kind of get after a little bit. No, you're, you're not averaging marathon pace, but you're averaging, you know, if you're averaging 30, 45 seconds per mile for the run, you know, you start out, you know, a minute, minute and a half slower and then work it down to like 30 seconds slower than marathon pace per mile. You're going to average a pretty quick long run. And I think that you're going to get a lot more out of that than just trying to, uh, survive, um, a big 20 miler and a big workout on Saturday too. So, um, I think that's, to me, that's where we're at. I think that's why the 16 mile run works, um, especially for the recreational athlete or a person who, um, is just kind of moving into that bigger mileage overall. Uh, I think it's a good way to uh, accommodate all of that and still adapt and still grow as a marathoner. So hopefully that helps you out. Hopes, uh, you know, kind of gives you some insight to why we're doing what we're doing. I think that's always important to understanding. And then once you understand, it's easier to comply with what the schedule is telling you to do because you have the reasoning in now, now you have the reasoning in hand of why we prescribe something that we prescribe. So, so in any case, hopefully that helps you out and, uh, I will talk to you later. All right. See you.